In this video, we'll take a closer look at Koto panels, which is a pre-fabricated alternative building technology. We'll discover two popular types of Koto panels you can use to build your new house. Also, towards the end of the video, we'll go over the benefits of using Koto panels for your house and some considerations to think about. We'll also compare Koto panels to EPS panels since they're built using the same material, expanded polystyrene. Hi, I'm Nick Moema, and let's start by exploring the Koto wall panel. The Koto wall panel is primarily built using expanded polystyrene, or EPS in short. The EPS is the white material that you see surrounding the hollow cores of the Koto panel. This makes each panel light in weight, making it easier to carry around during installation. Also, because of the lightweight nature of the panels, it reduces the overall weight of your house. That's a major benefit of using Koto panels. Now, as I've said before, Koto panels have hollow sections between them, and they serve an important purpose. Because inside the hollow sections, concrete is poured to give the panels their strength. Also, reinforcement is added according to specified intervals depending on the design of your walls. This is an improvement over the traditional EPS panel, which requires concrete to be shortcreted throughout the face of the panel. This means that cotto panels require less concrete than EPS panels. Moving on, the face of each panel is pre-coated with a layer of plaster. The plaster is held in place by a fiber mesh that spans the entire panel. This means that you don't have to plaster your walls as that has already been done by Koto. This saves you the additional cost and time taken to plaster your walls. There are two thicknesses you can choose for load bearing purposes. The first thickness is 150 millimeters, which is recommended for single story structures. The second thickness is 200 millimeters, which is recommended for double story structures. The length and height of the panels vary. For the length, you can choose between a 1.2 or a 1.8 meter long panel. The heights vary by a factor of 0.3 meters. That means the shortest height you can buy is 0.3 meters and the maximum height is 1.2 meters. For more information, I'll leave a link in the video's descriptions to Koto's website where you can learn more about the dimensions of Koto panels. That's because the dimensions affect the pricing of the panels, so be sure to check out that link. This is the second type of Koto panel available for purchase. It's also built using expanded polystyrene. It has a unique design where three hollow ridges span the length of the panel. The idea is to provide a sort of mold for beams that will support the slab. Also, the use of EPS reduces the dead weight of the slab. Steel rebars for the beams are also laid inside the hollow ridges. Because of this, the Koto slab panel is a time-saving technology of casting suspended slab for structures, such as your house, for example. There are three differences between a Koto and an EPS floor panel. The first difference is the application of a plaster finish for the Koto panel. As you can see here, the bottom face of the panel has a layer of plaster applied to it. This will serve as the rough sealing finish of the slab. An EPS panel doesn't have this finish, meaning you'll have to incur the time and costs of doing it yourself. The second difference is the lack of a steel mesh on top of the Koto panel. Instead, the BRC mesh is laid on top of the Koto slab panel and afterwards a layer of concrete is poured. An EPS panel has a steel mesh at the top and bottom, therefore saving you the costs of the BRC mesh. The third difference is the thicknesses of the panels. The Koto slab panel comes in two thicknesses, that is, 150 millimeters and 200 millimeters panels. On the other hand, you have more freedom of choice with an EPS floor panel. There are 150, 190, 260, and 290 millimeter thick panels. 
The thickness depends on the design and the load-bearing capacity of your house. This information is predetermined by your structural engineer. So we've taken a closer look at cotton panels and also compared them to EPS panels. Here are some considerations to think about. The first consideration is the use of expanded polystyrene. EPS is a byproduct of petroleum. If the price of petroleum goes up, then the price of cotton and EPS panels will also go up. So you need to take that into consideration during the budgeting process of your house. Another consideration is the heavy reliance of concrete. At the time of making this video, the price of cement has gone up across the country here in Kenya. That means it will cost you more right now to produce concrete because of the increase in prices of cement. So you also need to take that into consideration when you're budgeting for your house and when you're thinking of using either cotton or EPS panels. Now, cotton panels offer an advantage to EPS panels because they come pre-plastered with concrete on the face of their panels. That means you'll save that extra cost of plastering your walls or your ceiling than when compared to EPS panels. In my opinion, cotton panels are an amazing alternative building technology, but I don't consider them as an affordable building technology. If you'd like to learn more about the pricing of Koto panels, I've left a link to Koto's website where you can see the prices of each panels according to their thicknesses. So that's it for this video. I hope you've learned something and if you're considering using Koto panels, I hope the video has been of help to you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.